Hey guys, today we're going to solve lead code number 1567, maximum length of subarray with positive product. So this can be easily rephrased with maximum length of subarray with even amount of negative elements. And also remember that we cannot have zeros in this subarray because that would make the product zero, which is not considered positive by the definition of this problem. And we need to return the maximum length of a subarray with positive product. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to solve it with a for loop but before we need to initialize some variables. So the key insight to solve this problem is whenever you find an odd amount of negative elements in your array, what you can do is you can just remove the first one and that will give you the longest possible subarray because if you weren't, if you aren't removing the first one, let's say you're removing like the second one to get an even amount of negative elements, then you know you're missing out on one. So the best thing to do when you have an odd amount of negative elements is remove the first one that you've met. Okay, so with that key inside, we can now solve the problem. And obviously, as I just said, we need to store, we need to remember the index of the first negative element that we find. And initially we initialize that with minus one. Then we also need to keep track of the last zero index that we found. This is coming, this is going to come into play later. You're going to see why this is needed. And we also need to keep track of the current amount of negative numbers that we found so far. And also just the, this is going to be re the return variable, the maximum length. So as I said, we're going to solve this with, with a for loop. So at the end of this for loop, we're going to return maximum. And obviously we're going to have to update our maximum variable inside of this for loop. So the for loop is just a classic uh, loop through all of the indices of the nums array. And now we store the current element in a variable because we're going to access it a lot of, a lot of times. And now we have two cases. Uh, if the element is negative, then increment the count of negatives. And if it is the first negative that we've found so far, update the first negative index to the current index. So if the element is negative, increment the amount of negative numbers that we've found so far and update the first negative index if it is still minus one meaning that we haven't touched it yet. Okay, now if the element instead is zero, that's a special case. Um, if the element is zero, we are surely not going to have a very long subarray because that's going to give us a zero product, which is not positive. So the length in this case would be zero. And we don't want any element of zero value in our subarrays. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset all of the variables, but the maximum array. Like the maximum length, we're not going to reset it because it's not like when we meet a zero value, all of the previous subarrays are invalidated. That's not the case. So the previous one are still valid. So we reset all of the other variables, but the maximum. And now the last zero is updated to the current index. And you're going to see why this is useful later. But if the element is not zero, then what we can do is now we can calculate if the current amount of negative elements that we have in our current subarray is even, so the remainder with two is zero, then we can update our max variable. And this is how you calculate the length of the current subarray. Now you can see why this last zero is so important. Well, instead, if the count of negatives is an odd number, then we need to use the first negative index because as I was telling you before, we're going to remove the first element that is negative to get the longest possible subarray with an even amount of negative numbers. So that's it already and I'm going to submit to show you that it works. And it does, so that's it for now and bye.